In this video, we're going to look at an algorithm called Dijkstra algorithm. So Dijkstra algorithm is an algorithm trying to find the shortest path from the starting node of the graph to all the nodes in the graph. So rather than teach you the theory and the concepts about uh, Dijkstra, uh, I would like to talk about, or in this case, try to go over a legal example called uh, network delay time. So this is a legal question that's related to Dijkstra algorithm. And basically the question is that we're given a network of n nodes uh, labeled from one to n. So uh, we're, you're also given times, which is a list of travel times as direct edges. So you can see that we have times that i is basically represents a source node, right? And this is the uh, target node, right? So the source node is pointing to a target node. So it's a, a one directional graph. And then we also have the weight of the edge, right? So you can see that from this node to this node, it takes a weight of one to reach from this node to this node, right? So in this case, we have weight as the third, or in this case, the third element in the array. Um, and then we will send a signal from a given node k, return the time it takes for all the nodes, for all the end nodes to receive the signal. Uh, if it is if it is impossible to reach all the n nodes to receive the signal return negative one. So that basically means that if we cannot be able to find a node, right, in this case, let's say we have a node that we cannot be able to reach. For example, if I have node five here and pointed to node six, and I cannot be able to reach this node, so therefore I'm just going to return negative one because there is a disjoint subset, right? So in this case, uh, you can see that this is our example, right? And basically, we're starting from k, and this is this is the k, right? No k, or no two. Uh, this is the source node. We want to start from this node, and we want to know the uh, basically return the times, right? It takes for all the uh, for all the end nodes to receive the signal. Basically, we want to be able to visit all the nodes in the graph, and we want to return the total. Uh, basically the total times, right? The time it takes to re to uh, to visit all the nodes that we have in our graph. So you can see that the result is two. The reason why we have two is because you can see it takes from, it takes uh, one time, right? Basically a weight of one to go from this node to this node. And it takes one also to go from this node to this node. And But here it takes also one, right? But the thing is that here, by the time we get here, this is the source, right? This is the source, uh, source. So in this case, we go from here to here, and that's one. And from here, because it takes one to go here, right? So from here to here is basically one, right? Plus one, which is basically two, right? It takes a weight of two to go to this edge, or in this case, sorry, this vertex, right? So in this case, we're returning the time it takes to visit all the end nodes that we have in our graph, which is basically two, right? So to solve this problem, we can use Dijkstra algorithm to solve this problem. And basically, uh, Dijkstra algorithm is kind of similar to BFS or breadth first search. So for breadth first search, we basically traverse level by level, right? And basically, what we're going to do is that um, after we visit all the nodes that we have in our current level, we're going to move on to the next level, visit all the nodes that we have on the next level, and then we move on to the next next level, right? But for Dijkstra, it's sim similar, right? For BFS, we use a um, we use a queue, right? We use a queue um, to store all the nodes that we have for our next level, right? The next, the all the nodes that we're going to traverse for our next level. But for Dijkstra, right, uh, for Dijkstra, we are basically going to, instead of using a queue, right, we're going to use a main heap so that we are ensure every node that we visit is actually the shortest path from the source node, right? Rather than just visit level by level, we basically just going to visit each and every single node and we're ensure that the current node that we visit is actually the shortest path from the source node to the current node. Okay, so you can see here, we have an example of Dijkstra algorithm, right? So this is a graph, and uh, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use a min heap. So in this case, for our min heap, we know that the shortest or the smallest element will always be at the top of the heap, right? So if I want to know 
the shortest path, right? So let's say this is the source node, right? We're starting from the source node and we want to visit all the nodes that we have in our graph. So in this case, for this node to visit this node, right? In this case, this node has two child, right? Two children. In this case, we have C and B. So to go to C, it has a weight of two. And to go to B, it has a weight of nine, right? So in this case, of course, we're going to add both elements onto our heap, right? So we have C, which has a distance of two. We have a B, which has a, or has a weight of nine, right? So in this case, the min heap is basically going to be based on the distance from the source, right? So in this case, this element has a weight of two. This element has a weight of nine. So in this case, the smallest element will be at the top. So what we're going to do is that for our nest level, right, kind of like BFS but for our nest level, we're going to pop the top element out of the heap, right, which is basically C, right, which, ha which has the smallest distance. So what we're going to do is that we already visit A, so we mark A as visited. Okay, so we have A here. So once we uh, take the top element out of the heap, right, we visit its neighbor nodes. In this case, we have D, right? So we know that D has a weight of one. So in this case, the node D has a weight of one. So, but the thing is it takes two, right? To get here, right? The weight, the distance to get here is two. So two plus the distance to get to D is basically one. So in this case, to get to D, we up, we add the, uh, the current node and the current, the, the distance from the source node to node D, add it onto the heap. So now we have D, right? So you can see we have D and then the distance to go to D is basically three. So of course, um, basically the top element that we have on our heap now is basically D, right? So in this case, we mark C as visited, right? So now we have C as visited. So then what we're gonna do is that we're going to visit the top, the or I should say pop the nest top element out of the heap, right? In this case, the nest element out of the heap is D, right? Because B has a weight of nine and D has a weight of three. So we take uh, D out of our heap, right? So now we take it out and then D is basically three. Uh, so we visit neighbor nodes, right? In this case, the neighbor nodes is B. C, in this case, we cannot go because this is directional and C is already visited. Um, so in this case, D has a child of B, so we just add B onto our heap as well. So in this case, to go to B, we know that it's three, but to go to B, right, in this case, it's basically three plus one is just four. Okay, so then we've already visited D, so we just add D onto our visited half set, right? Um, and then in this case, we remove the top element that we have in our B, uh, in our in our heap, in this case, is basically B, right? We just have B left, so we remove B out of our heap Right, so now we have we know that the uh, basically to go to B is basically four, right? So in this case, we of course we also going to have a variable that keep track of the distance, right? Basically, the time it takes to visit all the nodes, right? For each and every single level, right? So we know that it was uh, to go to B, it was four, right? So in this case, let's just say the level that we're on is four, right? So we're on our fourth uh, iteration, right? Or the fourth level, you can say it. Um, and then basically we already visit B, so we put B onto our hash set. So then we also have our last element on our heap, right? So which is also B, right? Which is the original when we start in a source node. It also has a connected edge between A and B, which has a weight of nine. But B, we already visit that. So in this case, we are basically just gonna pull it out of the heap. And now you can see the heap is empty. We visited all the nodes that we have in our graph. And the current level that we're on is basically four. It basically take four, uh, or time is four, right, to visit all the nodes that we have in our graph, right? So we ensure that you can see for every uh, node that we visit, we ensure that it's always the, um, the, the shortest path from the source node to the current node, right? So then we're basically return the level, right, where basically the time it take from the source node to all the nodes, right, finish traversing all the nodes that we have in our graph. So at the end, we're basically returning four, right? And if we, uh, in this case, basically, we're just going to use Dijkstra with min heap to solve this problem. 
And uh, let's take a look at a couple more example here. So you can see that, um, let's say we have a example like this, right? So we have node one, which is pointing to node two, and which has a weight of one, where we in basically number of nodes that we have, we basically have two nodes. We're starting at node K, which is node two. So in this case, if we use apply the same algorithm, we can do the same thing, right? We have a heap. We starting from this, right? So we have node two, and in this case, the weight is of, of course is going to be zero, right? In our heap. So in this case, we visit all the neighbor nodes. In this case, it's pretty much nothing. We don't have any nodes that we have. This node does not connect to any nodes. So in this case, we don't. Uh, we just basically remove that out of our heap and we add it onto our hash set, right? But then we know that the main heap is empty now. So we, we, what we do at the end is we check to see if the size of the hash set is equal to it, right? If in this case, if the hash set has only size of one and n is equal to two, right? Then in this case, that condition does not uh, does not return true. So we're basically just going to return negative one, right? If we did not visit all the nodes that we have in our hash set, right? So now we know how to solve this problem using Dijkstra. So let's take a look at how we can do this in code. So to do this in code, what I did here is I create a class called solution. And then basically inside the class, I have a network delay function, which takes the times, right? Just like a, just like the question was asking. So basically it has this 2D array, right? And for each and every single array ha always has a size of three. Okay, and then we also have n, which is number of nodes that we have in our graph. And the case where we is the source node where we're starting, right? Um, and then basically, first what we do is we build a graph, right? Because in this case, it gave us the edge. So we know that two is connected to one and then has a weight of one. That's one edge. And then here you can see the two is connect connected to three and has a weight of one. That's also one edge. And then two is connected, uh, three is connected to four. It has a weight of one, that's also one edge. So in this case, we're basically given a array of edges. So what we need to do is we need to create a graph, right? An actual graph that um, that we can be able to know who is connected to who, right? In, using the table. Um, the, the reason why we're using a uh, hash table is that we can be able to uh, find who is connected to who in a constant time, right? I, I know that, well, I know that two is connected to you no know, one, I know two is also connected to node three, right? I can be able to use a graph that represents that, which basically the key is basically the node or the source node. And then the list of integer arrays, basically the um, basically the nodes that the source node is connected to, right? And you can also see that for each and every single iteration, we have the source, we have the target, we have the weight. So in this case, we check to see if graph contains the source node uh, if it doesn't, we just create the list. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to create, uh, we're going to get the source, right? We're going to add the current target node onto it. But you notice that we're adding also adding the weight, right? So this weight here is basically the weight um, the, or the edge weight between the source node and the target node. Okay, so then you can also see that what we're going to do is we're going to use a min heap. And then we basically use a min heap um, sorted by the weight Right, so you, we know that in this case, uh, we're going to insert a integer array with size of two. The first element is a target. The second element is a weight. So we're basically sorted by the weight, right, in the min heap. And then we also create a visited hash set, basically keep track of all the visited nodes. Um, and then you can see that for min heap, right, basically we add the first element, which is basically the source node, as well as um, the weight, right? In this case, we're starting at the source node. So there's pretty, pretty much to have no weight or no edge um, that is pointing to the source node. So we're basically starting with a weight zero. Uh, we have a result here, basically basic, uh, keep track of the, the, um, the current level, right? Which or basically the time it takes to visit all the nodes or the current level of nodes, right? Um, so we perform BFS, right? So in this case, or, or Dijkstra, it doesn't really matter how you call it, but basically we check to see if the min heap is uh, not empty. If it's not empty, we take top element out of the min heap. And then 
in this case, the first element, like I mentioned, is the source node. Uh, the second element is the weight of, uh, of this current node, right? To get to the current node. Um, and then we check to see if the source node is already visited. If it's visited, we continue. If not, we basically uh, say result is equal to the source weight, which is basically um, the distance, right, from the source node to the current node, right? So we uh, basically update the result. So then what we're gonna do is that we're basically just going to add this node as visited, and then we check to see if the graph contains the source node, right? The reason why we do this is because you can see that uh, when we do building the graph, right? There could be a situation where you can see that four is not a source node at all, right? So no, no four is not pointing to anything. So if no four, it, or in this case, a node that's it, that ha doesn't have a key, or in this case, is not pointing to anything, we just continue, right? Otherwise, we basically iterate each and every single edge that we have, right, for this current node in our graph. And then we're just going to add it onto our min heap, okay? And you can see that basically we update the weight because in this case, the weight is actually from the source node uh, to the current node, right? So in this case, the source weight is basically the weight that we have to the current node. And then the target node, uh, the, the target weight is basically the, the, the weight or the weight of edge to go to the target node, right? So we, up, we, we update the, the, the weight and then we add it onto the min heap. And then we're just going to continue to do that until we, uh, the min heap is basically empty. And at the end, we basically check to see if we visit all the nodes. If we didn't visit all the nodes, we basically return negative one. Otherwise, we return uh, the result.